When I was four years old, my mom was putting me to bed and she said, make sure you count your blessings before you go to bed. Think about what you're grateful for because if those that are grateful for things, they get more to be grateful for. And so that was kind of implanted in my thinking very young. But I really didn't formally focus on gratitude until a little later. And then I started accumulating on a daily basis, starting around 1718, um, documenting what I was blessed by that each day. And I called it, had the opportunity to da da da. And I've got now 25 volumes of that. And it's, uh, it's probably over, there's over 5,000 pages of just gratitudes, 10 point print, one inch margins of daily gratitudes that I keep. And I'm a firm believer that, that when you do that, when you're really balanced and you're centered, you are grateful. You know, if we, if we look up to somebody and we infatuate with them and we minimize ourselves, we're not being authentic and we're not seeing them as they are. And we look down on people, we exaggerate ourselves and minimize them and neither are authentic. But when we actually look across with a reflective awareness with some equity and our heart opens, we realize that they're, they're worthy of love. Nobody's worth putting on pedestals or pits, but everybody's worth putting in hearts. And when that state's there, it's just your, your resonant, if you will. And you end up having more, um, I guess, sustainable fair exchanges and transactions that start building momentum and they expand opportunity. So I'm a firm believer that uh, if you document your gratitudes, it definitely adds to the opportunities and the contribution in life and the re reciprocation that you get back. So I'm a firm believer of that because I, I've, I've seen the results of it and I got it all documented and it's really amazing what happens when we, I always say gratitude is the key that opens up the gateway of the heart and inside the heart's love. A love window washes the mind as it radiates out. And that brings an enthusiasm to the body and more certainty and presence to the to our own existence. And then we end up having opportunities that that magnetizes and the synchronicities of people, places, things, ideas, and events into our life that, that synchronize with what our innermost dominant thought is. We create things that are very fulfilling. Wow, so it all starts with gratitude. Yeah, I think that uh, gratitude is a great uh, door opener for our existence. Well, there's there's 15 delusions that I, I find that, that leads to people that shut off their gratitude. They have expectations on people to be one-sided. Um, if I went up to somebody and I said, uh, and just anybody, I just walked up to them and I said, you're always kind, never cruel, always up, never down, always positive, never negative, always peaceful, never wrathful, always considerate, never inconsiderate, always generous, never stingy, always giving, never taking, would you believe me? They go, not really. Because they immediately would intuitively, like a thermostat, think of the sides when they were not that way. If I said, you're always down, you're never up, you're always negative, you're never positive, you're always taking, never giving, always stingy, never generous, always inconsiderate, never considered, always wrathful, never peaceful, always negative, never positive, they would have the same thing, but they would think of their upsides. If I said, sometimes they're kind, sometimes they're cruel, sometimes they're nice, sometimes they're mean, sometimes they're positive, sometimes they're mean, they go, yes. They'd have a sense for that balanced state that they have both. But whenever they are putting an expectation on themselves or others to be one-sided, they set themselves up for unrealistic expectations that are unobtainable or sustainable. And as a result of it, they end up in gratitude because they have the anger. I call it the ABCDFGHs of negativity, anger and aggression, blame and feelings of betrayal, criticisms and challenges, despair and depression, the desire to exit and escape, frustration, futility, grouchiness and grief and hatred and hurt. Hmm. And we create those as a result of an unrealistic expectation that we project on others or on ourselves to be one-sided. Or if we expect that individual to live in our values or expect ourselves to live in somebody else's values and not be authentic to ourselves, we set ourselves up that undermine the gratitude attitude. And we also do that on, on objects. We could do that on an ATM machine or a computer. <laughs> I've seen people get really angry at a computer and call it stupid, and I'm starting to think maybe they're reflecting on something. Right. But we, we put unrealistic expectations out there and it erodes the natural yearning to unexpressed thank you. I believe it was Pictetus. Uh, Pictetus was the philosopher that first put that together, that term. And uh, most people want to be victims of their history instead of masters of their destiny at first. They, you know, they want to look at an external source. And as a result, they blame these things outside themselves. Then they blame themselves because they have this injected value system of mothers, fathers, preachers, teachers, conventions, traditions that they're comparing their life to and they think, oh, they're making a mistake. And eventually they realize, no, there's a, a transcendent awareness, as Kohlberg describes, where you realize there's, it wasn't either of those. There's just something to be grateful for. And I think that that's a, a liberating state that not everybody attains on a consistent basis by any means, but they certainly have a yearning innately, a calling to transcend the uh, the judgments, the, the lower moralities of punishment rewards that they get themselves into.